everyone. Welcome back to Gordy's Gas Bags. We're cruising through Kiwi Week. It's been nothing short of sublime. And thanks heaps for everyone for writing in. I know how much you're enjoying seeing all of our opponents across the ditch. Uh, of course, Corona hanging about still, as it has been every episode since we started. Um, I'm excited about this one today because I was a bit of a fangirl of her playing days <laughs> when I used to commentate her. Um, and we've taken the uh, challenge from Yvonne Willering and I had to go all the way to the north of New Zealand, up the North Island here, and I found none other than Tema Parra Bailey. Bubby, how are you going? <laughs> I am good. I am good. Look. Black and white, New Zealand week, head shoulders. Well, <laughs> you, the, I've, I'm starting to run out of black and white. So I wear a different hat every episode and I've started with Nolene and I dressed up and I've kind of gone a bit backwards for you. I do apologise. <laughs> it's all good. I like backwards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I'm going to start straight at the top and go, how good do you look for a grandma? <laughs> Oh, um, looks can be deceiving, Sue. Looks can be deceiving. You don't know what's underneath these clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I've done myself up a little bit. <laughs> what's um? How's COVID for you? What's your household like? Who's there? And is it is it crazy or is it just you and Hub or how does it work? Yeah, so we've come up north um, to Rokaka, which is south of Whangarei, um, and we're with Wayne's mum and dad. Um, they've got a big piece of land, and um, with um, my stepson is here as well. So there's five of us in the household. Um, lots of land um, to go walking. There's animals like cows and pigs to feed and bushes to cut, apparently, which I kind of watch from a distance, my yeah. husband doing that. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad, actually. There's a uh, room to walk around and kind of get in your own space if you need to. My husband and I are still talking, so that's a positive. <laughs> We were having a bit of a chat, weren't we, that how many divorces may come from COVID, one of the negatives. Yeah, I, I haven't actually got to try and study to be a divorce lawyer yet, but um, it's still on the cards. <laughs> hey, listen, um, let's go right back to when you were eight years of age. Not that I know a lot about it. <laughs> Holy you. moly. I know, it's taking it back. But am I right in saying that where you started playing netball was on a car park that got turned into netball courts or something? Is that right? Yeah, it was in a little suburb called Mangere, which is in south of Auckland. And at that stage, they didn't have any netball courts. So they painted the netball courts on the food town, which was food town back then, car parks. So um, it was quite a lot of teams. So that's where I first started playing my netball, on the oh, car park. And <laughs> I imagine, the car park. were you a mid-quarter always or did you start as a goal attack or a goal defence? Uh, well, actually, I started at a goal keep. I was picked in a representative team as a goal keep. Right. So what I would try and do was stand at the top of the circle and get the ball before it actually had to go into those birds at the back. So, um, but as I kind of grew up or got older, um, everyone else grew, but I stayed the same. So I gravitated to the middle of the court. So it kind of went like that. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you love netball from the start? Was it, was it dear to your heart from the start? Um, I actually did gymnastics as my first sport, and I didn't look very good in a leotard um, at that age. Uh, I had um, strong legs, I like to call them. <laughs> um, um, so I decided to put a skirt on. So, yep, definitely started from the beginning, but I kind of fell in love with touch rugby. I uh, played a lot of that, and it, it's quite a social sport. And as you know, I like to be a little bit social. So I think that's what kind of caught my eye was the, that side and also the competitiveness. Um, so touch was really my favourite sport. And then uh, it came to a stage where I had to choose between two because they were falling, trainings were falling on the same night, and um, each sport was asking for more commitments. So um, I decided to choose netball, which now I'm sitting here after what I've been through. I'm so glad that I did. Well, 80, 89 caps to your name. So it's a, it's a, an, and you, it's a mean feat, but it's, it's an intriguing journey for you, wasn't it? So, cause I want to go to, uh, yep. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to a trip that you did. I think it was your, your first trip with the Silver Ferns. And I think you came across to Australia, didn't you, in Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide, but you didn't get on the court. Did you go shopping? No, no, I didn't. Yeah, yep, yep, that's right. It was Tanya Dalton and I, T-Bag, T-Bag and I. We both got in the team at the same time and we never got any court time, but we managed to sneak out, um, well, kind of left the building um, and went to go to the markets in Melbourne and came back with 
truck loads of um, stuff. Um, and so, yeah, so that was the very first trip. <laughs> what was it like when you first got announced in, you know, we've, we've been chatting with Lizzie Ellis last week and she was a youngster that went in to play for Australia and she said that, you know, while she had a lot of confidence, the players around, she, she was quite overwhelmed. Did, did you find that as well when you first stepped into the Silver Ferns, looking at this group of players around you as such a youngster? 20 years of age or whatever you were? Yeah, definitely. You, yeah, yeah it, was, it was interesting. And um, Liz is right. You kind of look at them and you think, wow. And like for me, it's like, oh, why have I been picked when there's such amazing players around me? And you kind of get this little complex, but then you still have to do your job. And um, for a part there, I thought maybe I was just picked to make the numbers up. But as time grew on, you knew what your place was and, and, and what your role was being in that team. And um, it took a wee, wee while to believe that um, I was picked above other players in, in that respect and just being around the caliber of players that were there at that stage it was an, an amazing feeling actually are you a confident person by nature um not really no i'm definitely not i think um uh if i know something really well i'm confident in what i do if it's something that i'm learning i kind of just ease my way, ooze kind of a little bit of confidence, but no, not really. I've got to know my stuff to be really confident in what I do. Okay. Well, you certainly got to know your stuff at the Silver Burns level. <laughs> you were a pain in the ass to Australia. You realise that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could say the same thing. Jeepers. <laughs> You had to keep reinventing stuff to try and um, get on top of those blimmin' Aussies um, <laughs> who were bloody good at what they do. Um, so it was awesome, actually. It was really cool. Always a battle. Always have to bring your A game. Yeah. After after you'd done your shopping trip, it was four years before you stepped onto the court, wasn't it, at the Silver Ferns? Yeah. You your time. Um, and... It was an interesting debut. You de well, it's an, it was an interesting debut for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was alongside Irene. Yeah. What a good moment that would have been. Oh, it was awesome. And you knew as a feeder when you're feeding someone like Irene, it doesn't matter if your pass was crap, she would make it look freaking amazing. Yeah. Even though her back's kind of turned inside out, her hand's going up for the ball, a defender's behind her, she'd still get it. And she is such the type of person that would say, oh, if she dropped, oh, that was my bad, I should have caught that. But um, yeah, so it was really nice to have her there and being in the same position, being new and the team together. Um, and going through the same nerves and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, she was probably one of the better ones to be in that situation with. Yeah, and but on that very game, it wasn't a great day for the Silver Ferns, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we got slaughtered by 20, what was it, 24, 25 or something yeah. like that. And in the 20s. I, it was, it was, yeah, it was interesting coming off the bench because you kind of looked at the score and then you're like, yep, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> And you know that you've got to do your own job, but you kind of try too hard and then that's kind of doesn't make it any better. Did that, did that game for you, given it was your debut game, I mean, you know, so you, you can't control, like the moment that you get to step on the court, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You can control your performance. But did you step off the court that day and did it just light a fire for you to go unacceptable? I can be better than that. We can be better than that. Oh, most definitely. And you've, you've got the coach obviously there and you've got the experienced players just reinforcing that whole um, conversation and that we were so much more better than that. It's not done to one person. It's a team effort and everyone needs, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that was a huge learning for me because um, obviously jumping on the court and representing your country and getting slaughtered. Um, and with media these days, they don't hold back. So, well, those days. Um, so it was a really good learning and you had to learn really fast to get back up and, and present again. Um, so I was lucky to have really cool people around me as well, um, kind of to help you through that. Um, who, who, yeah. was that? who was that? Who was around you at that time? Who were the cool people? Well, the obviously was Teabag. <laughs> she was my bench buddy and then Irene was there and uh, Linda Wagner, um, yeah. she was in there, Julie Seymour, she, um, you know, she's just a, a wise head and she knows how to communicate and communicate it well. Um, so, like, but yeah, the likes of those people, it was, it was a really good team. 
in that respect, even though we got slaughtered. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but, well, every team's, you know, like, I mean, it's the characters that make the team, the performance is another outcome of that again. So I can understand mm. why you say that. What, what were you, were you the sort of, like, I look at you and, you, you know, as an athlete, you were a pocket rocket. I think we used to name you that in commentary um, mm. and, and just a fitness machine that would repeat efforts over and over and over again. You just never stopped. So I want to take you into the training environment. Was that your mindset? Were you a hard training? Because we've, I've, I've chatted with Eve on this week and, and even Nolene and both coaches have said that the, the Silver Ferns have had to evolve over time to really understand how the training environment needed to change. So I'm curious to know where you sat. Mm. Yeah, no, I definitely did what I was asked to do um, in terms of um, that. But in terms of fitness testing, and I think back then we had the beat test and the yo-yo, I was middle of the road in those tests. And I think um, for me, that was a, a lot mental. It was mentally kind of um, was holding me back. And I used to always dread going into that. And I think that was my first fault. And, and when I um, sort of went on the line, I was just like, Oh, and I hate running and just running. It was so boring and you just go beep and beep. And then I think that sort of um, lead in um, that kept me in that middle of the pack as opposed to um, excelling in the fitness test. Um, but what I did love was um, in the moment stuff. I loved that kind of stuff and the short, sharp kind of change of direction and just um, – different ideas of running and I, I kind of get bored pretty quickly <laughs> so <laughs> if I have a purpose and I know that purpose and the reason what behind it then I would go hard and do it yeah. and I was that type of trainer and if you ask any of the trainers I had I would always push them to the end why are we doing this and um, how where does this happen on court but like, why are we doing repeat sets and it's 30 meters I only run 20 so I was that kind of person but I kind of did it because it stirred them up a bit so I was quite cheeky in that and I think that helped in terms of how much hard effort I put into the hard work who kind of balanced it out for me? <laughs> so with that, who, who was the coach did you really appreciate? I had a few coaches actually. Um, coming through, Jan London kind of brought me through um, the under-21 stage. And then um, Yvonne Willering uh, was huge in terms of um, just gameplay, just smart. She's so smart. And even though she's a defensive player, she thinks she knows attack as well, which she does. Um, kind, of learned, <laughs> kind of learned a lot from her. Um, Deb Fuller, uh, Deb Fuller always think, uh, thought outside the box, which I enjoyed. And I think um, I've been lucky enough to have coaches at the time of my career where I needed the expertise. It wasn't planned, but it just kind of happened. Um, and the Silver Ferns um, had the luxury of having Lynn Gunson, who was just a thinker. And she, she got you thinking about things that you think, oh, yeah, that's right. Like just the whole release of a ball and and all that kind of stuff. So that was really cool. So um, like I said, been lucky enough to have um, different coaches at different times in my career where I've needed something different. Who did you love playing alongside? Oh, um, I think um, like netball back in the day when we had our kind of club netball, the Northern Force, I don't know if you remember them, the Northern Force, um, that was probably one of my favourite um, teams that I've, I've had and um, I've played with and we still keep in touch now. And Megan Anderson, um, Megan, um, she was playing over here as well and that was probably one of the best years I think our team has been in there. Cheryl Scanlon, uh, Vili Davu. I think, sorry, sir, it's cutting out a little bit. That's right. No, I was just going to say, you lived with Megan, didn't you? You were in During that time? Yeah, 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 yeah. She, um, she stayed with us and it, it, was, um, it was awesome. Yeah, no, Aussies are uh, good. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate you taking my phone call. <laughs> It was a text first. I was like, oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, um, we, John, you know John Farnham, singer? Yes. Yeah, you know they, yeah. you know, we call him the comeback king? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know we call you the comeback queen, hey? <laughs> oh, my gosh. What was I thinking? Jesus. Talk, talk me through that. So you retired in 2012. You yeah. played what was it, 80, I think I've just wrote, 89 test caps for New Zealand, something like, I don't know, however many ANZ championship games, 70, 80 ANZ champs games. You bug it off and then all of a sudden you're back again, what, four or five years later? 
four or five year. I just um, so you were talking about last year, eh? Yeah, 20, 2017 you came back in as an assistant coach or something, and then all of a sudden a couple of injuries yep. back in the team. My God. <laughs> My God, what was I thinking? Jeepers. Well, well no, but I, I wanna I really want to delve into this because let let's go right. <laughs> like, so the circumstances around it were we knew, which were that there were injuries at the time. Um, mm. So I want to know because you're involved in the coach. So what? What? How did the conversation go? Was Kerry Kerry's the coach? Yeah, Kerry was the coach. So what actually happened was Grace Cara. Yep. She um, was one of the senior players in our team, um, and probably the most experienced. No, actually there was Floyd there, so she was probably the second most experienced. Experienced in the midcourt. She got pregnant. So at that stage, um, when she found out, um, all players had obviously been, all the experienced players had obviously been selected on their team. Um, I was in Thailand because my husband um, would just come back from Thailand because he'd worked over there for two years. Mm. So this year is the first year back. Um, I was in Thailand. She gave me a call and she just looks, um, she just said, um, Grace is pregnant. And she goes, no. I have thought about this and I have spoken to other people about it and we do believe in you. And I was thinking, what is she talking about? She goes, um, would you consider, <laughs> would you consider coming back and playing? And I'm like, shit, she obviously liked what I saw. She saw when I filled in as an extra player at training. <laughs> no, I didn't think that. Um, I just was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and I, I think for me, um, I don't like saying no. Um, but I think at this stage I said, oh, kids, have you really thought about this? You know, um, um, a bit older now and stuff. And she goes, yeah, I know that, um, but I know you're still training and you look really good. And when you do go on the court, you know, and it's a, your experience as well that will get you through it. And I just said, shit, if I take this on, kids, I need to have a training program right now. And then, and then I agreed to do it. And then I got a um, training program from our trainer. It's a pre, pre-season training program. Never, ever done a pre-season in my life because usually we have a break for yeah. international. Yeah. So it was always that kind of just roll on, roll on. So never done. Oh, my God hundreds, hundred and fifties, hundreds, repeat, repeat, repeat. I'm doing these running in Thailand, it's hot. And I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> I should be sitting here with my grandchildren, two bottles of wine. <laughs> <laughs> so that would have been the hardest training that I had ever done, to be quite honest. Is um, But in saying that, um, going through the season, that was probably the best thing that could have, that I could have done. Why? To be ready for the season. Um, just my body wasn't used to it. I've been out of the game for so long. It's obvious, obviously growing in terms of physicality. Um, everyone's fitter, stronger, faster. Um, just what you can get away with on the court in terms of the body contact and um, not purposeful, obviously. But um, um, So all that kind of stuff. And I think having that extra training under my belt helped me progress a lot faster to where Kerry wanted me to be and where the team was when I actually came in. Did you enjoy it playing? I loved it. I, I you know, people do ask me that and I and I yeah, absolutely loved it. I loved being in the moment again and that whole feeling of, you know, where you can place a ball or how you can get the better of your opponent or, you know, the look on the defence face when a ball goes through both of them, all those kind of moments that you can't get back or you can't train to um, experience, um, they all came back and I, I yeah, absolutely loved it. And just the banter. So Floyd, um, Liana and I on the court, we have a love-hate relationship and something goes over my head. I'm going like, are you going to get that? And then she yeah. goes, well, get my medal, get that. And then the girls, and they didn't understand the old school kind of way we had and they were kind of looking at us. So we had to actually have a... Um, chat as a team and said, it's okay, we, we still like each other, but it's just how we demand from each other on the court. <laughs> so I loved all that, loved the whole um, understanding the younger generation, being amongst them in the moment. And because as a coach um, for the younger generation, it's different. And actually understanding them when they're out there on court in the moment um, made it a lot better, I think, coming back as a coach and, and understanding them. Yeah. Talk about the coaching because 
I mean, not that I know you overly well, but I don't know, for some reason, I just didn't see you putting on the coaching hat. We, I don't know. Like, so I guess my <laughs> question is, did you, did you think that was going to be part of your pathway? Oh, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I did say um, that when I finished playing um, that I would never coach. You know, they don't. Oh, they just sort of, they get blown up if they don't. Um, if they don't win and then they don't get any accolades if they do win it's all about the players and stuff yeah. and and so I was like nah never but I my husband's cousin had asked if I'd coach their daughter's school team so that's how I started started to enjoy it actually and then started coaching some I'm um, doing some coaching papers and co coaching reps and then kind of got into it that way and I think um like you talked about being a confident person and if you know your stuff and I think um coaching is just sharing my knowledge and what I know about the game and the people that I have coached has enjoyed it so that's the kind of return and, and that's kind of made me want to give more and more and more until they kind of look at me and go um you're too old you don't know what you're talking about the game's moved on <laughs> and I think that's probably the enjoyment I get out of it and that keeps me wanting to come back would would you go on to head coach do you think at the elite level? Um, I'd love to if I got the opportunity. Um, mm. I um, Obviously, you've got to do your work before you get there. Um, and sometimes if you get chucked into something, that's probably the best way to learn. Um, so, yeah, no, definitely if there's an opportunity, I'd definitely take take it and um, see how I go. I oh, mean, it yeah. might not be the greatest, but... <laughs> Yeah, I didn't expect you to say that. So I'm, I'm get, watch this space, ladies and gentlemen, because that's, um, <laughs> that's very interesting. Hey, you mentioned Thailand before, so I was going to chat to you about mm. that. So you've been living over there, and your husband uh, had a gig over there. How was? I mean, you know, tough gig. <laughs> I know, right? I, I honestly, that experience for me was like holidays because I would come to New Zealand to do my coaching and um, I, like last year I played and then I would go back to Thailand for a holiday um, or to save my marriage if I would say that. <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, so he did, he did the hard yards and stuff, um, but he actually loved the experience as well and wow, well, Thailand's that's amazing. Like yeah. you just got amazing weather all year round. You know, people are friendly. We lived in a soy. Um, yeah, beautiful food, street food, cheap as. Mm. Uh, we lived amongst the locals and um, had some friends down the soy, which they call a street. And uh, we were sort of texting on the phone, and then that's how we would communicate. Sort of language changing on the phone. So that was a cool experience, and still keep in contact, even though the language is kind of. But see, <laughs> but where, very cool experience. Where were, you, where were you based? So we were based up in Chiang Mai, so north of Bangkok, sort yep. of in the middle. So we weren't by any beaches, but Chiang Mai is such a beautiful place. It's, mm. it's just amazing. Hey, I want to go a little bit back if I can, because you've got a bit of rhythm. <laughs> About 2012. Oh, no. <laughs> Dancing with the stars. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Oh God! For those that don't know, for those that don't know, let's set it up. You, you, um, it was the first year of the ANZ Championship, I believe, 2012. Yeah, 2012. And on yeah. the side, you just decided to accept the invitation to go into Dancing with the Stars in New Zealand, and you did okay. Like, as in, you won it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what it's about, eh? It's getting people to vote in. So I paid yeah. a lot of people to vote in. I'm still paying it. I'm still paying them back soon. I'm, I'm, I've just got, you know, student loans? I've got a Dancing with the Stars loan. <laughs> <laughs> could you dance before you went on? Oh, I could boogie. I'd like to boogie I've seen with you. Girls, I've but seen you boogie, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, like, but dance, dancing? I don't know, like lots and lots and lots of training i must admit though stefano who's an australian and he's mm. in sydney he um when we first did our dancing um he said what's wrong with your shoulders you need to relax a bit and i'm like i am he goes you look like this all the time you need to get rid of that muscle i said oh my god <laughs> so i had to like just relax a little bit and we didn't do any lifts <laughs> throughout the season for the dancing thing until the very end and his reason was that I needed to lose a little bit more weight so he could actually lift me <laughs> I was like 
well, you know, it's muscle. And then like Avon, Avon was the coach at that stage and I'll be sitting on the sideline and I'm sitting there with my back straight because it's all about posture. It's amazing how it changes your posture. Yeah. Sitting on the bench and usually I'm just like this little married girl sitting there waiting to go and then I'm like sitting there like this. is just like, what's going on with you? <laughs> Down the side of the bench. Like, it's, it's amazing. Dance is, dance is cool. Yeah, dance what, is cool. What was your favourite, like what was your favourite style? Um, I think I like the um, cha-cha. Because mm, it was quick and then you kind of just moved around and stuff. One of the ones I struggled with was the, um, uh, how do you call it, Casa Doble yeah. or something like that. Because you had to be so serious and he's like, look, I know you like to smile a lot, but you can't because you're going to like kill me like a bull. So mm. I'm doing these moves and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> cracking up. So it wasn't actually the moves that I was doing. It was more about trying to get a real serious face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was a cool experience. You had a very good profile prior to that moment, but did that shift your notoriety in New Zealand after? Yeah, I think so. I had a lot of um, non-sporting people kind of coming up to me saying, oh, thank you, just with the um, charity that I supported, which was, um, oh, I can't think of it. Um, geez, I can't think of it. But they had children who, who, had, who had that. And um, it was really cool and it was different. Um, religions and people who just come up with and gave you things from where they come from and it was really cool and just to be able to help them in some way um from a distance was was awesome as well yeah. autism that's it that autism. was what the young charity was um yeah re really good and i think um for me back then if you go back to the beginning of 2012 and, and particularly with the anz championship it was a bold move by our two countries to try something different and we knew that we were heading into the era of being an entertainment package. That's really where I think that all started. And all of a sudden, we're starting to see these personalities evolve. And I think you were just a trailblazer in that respect. I mean, I just recall you so specifically back then as just being a standout because you were doing something different. <laughs> it's really funny because um, when Avon coached, she had a game plan and she reminds me now and she said you need to come to some of my coaching clinics she goes yep we have a game plan and then you always do something different to it but it worked so I was okay with that <laughs> and I, I think it was she said um, that last night bubs she said that last night she she? Said, yep I would tell I would tell bubby you yeah, right now you're going to head out <laughs> to the right and the goal attack will head out to the left and then pop the whistle and go, and go to the left and then she would say, why did you do that? And you just said, well, just because I wanted to. I just, it just felt right. I think <laughs> that's what I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said before, I've been lucky enough to have coaches that let me express my own instinctiveness on court. And I think if I did come across a coach that kind of restricted um, probably the natural instincts or ability out there, I don't know if I would have, been the same player that I was yeah. if I had that kind of coach in my earlier days so um yeah yeah no it's interesting <laughs> um and and talking about being instinctive and I know that you've this has been spoken about quite a bit but it would I mean I haven't had the opportunity to chat to you about it I loved this moment when you got sent off the court but I loved it <laughs> not because it was the right decision it was the wrong decision there was no two ways about it but I just loved how you came back on the court after that moment. Yeah, it's funny because people are like, so how, what did you feel? What did um, Ruth say to you? So um, the girls kind of, it was interesting because when I got sent off, the players were left for six on the court against who were the best in the world at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, the girls just kind of changed bibs around. They were all good. I don't think they needed me out there because they never scored another goal on top of what they did. Um, so I came back on court. And Ruth just said to me, go out there and do your job. And the feeling I got, and I think that's the biggest thing, is from your peers or your teammates around you. They just kind of got, put the bit back on me, went back in, and then it was back to where it started when before I got sent off. So a lot of that is having a cool team, a great team culture and a great teammates around yeah. around us. Jeez, it feels like yesterday, but it's like 17 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's That's been a bit of a modern theme that's dropped through Gordy's gas bags as people... <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you've delved into a little bit of commentary. Uh, you were with us at the Sydney World Cup. Did you do you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it, I think, because I could talk about something I loved and it, it came from 
kind of what I saw on the on the court and um, really cool to be still close to the game but not in it. Um, and obviously you meet some really cool people, i.e. Sue Gordian. <laughs> Stop, stop, stop. But very stop. cool to have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going. Um, but cool to have that opportunity to um, work with people from another country as well and just see how they work and, and yeah, just see how they run things, to be honest. But enjoyed every minute of it, we even did, the end. <laughs> we did have a fun night at the end of the World Cup, didn't we? In Back in the room. Oh. I have to throw Jenny Woods under the bus here. <laughs> Do you remember this? Do you remember when we filmed our own um, thing that we were doing a film clip coming down the stairs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, remember what that was. the song was, but Toddy Miller was there with us and, and Melody Robinson was there and, <laughs> the group and we put you all up the top of the stairs and then one by one you had to come down. I was directing it and one by one you had to yeah, come down. Yeah, of course. Yes, of course, and sing to the camera. And Jen was the last person. And what did she do? Just, what did she do? Did she slide? <laughs> With a drink in her hand. <laughs> Head first, straight <laughs> <through her head. laughs> so so one by one, yes. Oh, God, I, I wet my pants. I honestly did. One by one, you buggers were <laughs> doing all your, doing your singing and your... Oh, well, it was to shake it up, I think, because Norma Plummer had done that shake it up song at the World Cup. So one by one, you were all coming down and doing that. And then we're waiting for Jen. And we're like, where's Jen? <laughs> She's <laughs> the commentator, the reserved commentator. And next minute, head first with her drink <laughs> out down the stairs. Oh, very funny. You buggers are funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, so are you guys. So are you guys make a good team, make a good, yeah. make good entertainment. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, listen, um, it's been really fun having a chat with you, but I'm not sure if you understand how these episodes finish. Oh, here we go. What What have you got in store for me? Well, so, I'll tell you what I've got in store for you, and see, the reality of the situation is, I know that you'll be able to do this. So, I've got no doubt about your um, off court. <laughs> antics <laughs> yeah. that you've got to the wee hours of the morning and a good a good song's come on and you've grabbed the microphone and you've belted out one of your favorite tunes you're a karaoke queen surely oh no i don't think i am i think um no i don't know i don't know i know i, I need that corona behind me yeah. <laughs> there you go no excuses have you got have you got a, what's your go-to karaoke song surely Everyone has one. Um, well, I kind of like um, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> you know, you know. I've got a feeling I know which song you're going to, but you realise that they are hard songs to sing, Bubs. This, you could yeah, be slaughtering your reputation I here. I know, maybe not. Maybe no, not. go there, go um, there. Don't let me push you off. No. No, go. No. Um, maybe it's... Hmm. Maybe girls want to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. Oh, Cindy Lauper. <laughs> Cindy Lauper. All right. Okay. Cindy Lops. Cindy Lops. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. She was a superstar on the netball court. She's a superstar. Wait, are you going to put some music on for me? No, you've just got to belt it out your own. Oh, my gosh. You're not going to remember the words. Um, <laughs> girls just want to have fun. I've got my iPad pencil. You like that one? Okay. okay. Introduce right. me again. Introduce me again. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the stars of the New Zealand netball scene, absolutely adored across the world. This is a moment that you will never want to give to anybody else but to sit here and enjoy the dulcet tones of Temapara Bailey with karaoke girls just want to have fun. Here we go. Oh, girls, they want to have, they really want to have Fun. Oh girls, they wanna have fun. Woo, woo. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> oh yeah, girls, just wanna have fun. <laughs> yeah, okay, now I've just realised you actually don't do a lot of karaoke, do you? I told you that I would dance for you, but no, you wanted me to sing, so there you go. Please you're don't a, judge. <laughs> you're a darling, you're an absolute darling. Listen, it's been really good to catch up with you. You've always got a smiling face and. 
I know you're adored by thousands in the netball world, not just in New Zealand, but, but everywhere. So uh, thank you for spending some time and having a chat. Very, very appreciative. Um, all week, because it is Kiwi Week, I've been allowing my guests to throw the challenge out to who I should have a chat with next. I'm a tad worried about you because I think you could go in any direction. Who should I... <laughs> Well, I must say, if you're, if you're thinking of someone Kiwi who has been, who played in both New Zealand and Australia and who is a legend in her own right, oh. I think you should speak to none other than Laura Langman. Hey, now listen, she may not accept because she is under player contract and they're only entitled to X number of hours a week. So... Uh, I'll have to I'll have to call in a favour, but I I accept the challenge, and I'll be ringing LL Cool J Laws. I'm coming at you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Just yeah. offer her some Ben and Jerry's ice cream. She loves yeah. it. Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> got me. Got me. What's what do you call it? me? Jandals on. Jandals. Yeah. Now I'm going and to talks. I could be a bro, couldn't I? I sing your national. Oh, it'd come country. up. You'd fit in anywhere, Sue. I guarantee <laughs> that. <laughs> Too kind. Too kind to Mapara. Hey, darling, thank you so much. Be safe through COVID. Lovely chatting with you. Awesome. Thanks, Sue. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.